Today in the Smugglers Room, we're going to do some good old-fashioned kit bashing. Yep, that's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to the Smugglers Room. This week, this chubby geek is fueled with inspiration. Last week, we featured Kelly and Props and Villainy and all the crazy and awesome stuff he's doing to build control panels. And that got me inspired to build something for the room. And not just that, but to get out there and find as many parts and pieces as I can find from a big box store. So make sure you're subscribed, hit the like button for us because it really does help continue to grow this channel. And let's get into the build. Whenever I'm starting a new project, inspiration seems to be the thing I'm after. Some kind of reference, something that I can get an idea from. It's not about copying. It's about coming up with something from something else. <laughs> Does that make any sense? I found this Star Wars Galaxy's Edge concept book, and it's full of all kinds of ideas. Some of the things that they actually did at the park, and in some cases, it's just a sketch or something that someone put together. In this book, there are a lot of different things that people worked out. A lot of the concepts for signage and things, there's different concepts for the droid building room. And in all of this, there is a lot of different detail, even though it's just concept art. Now, even among all of this great concept art, there was something that was rather simple. Simple, but it caught my eye. It's on this page here. These simple sketches really are depicting just random bits of greeblies. Overall, it got me really excited, especially this goofy one right here. Now there's nothing super special about any of it, but it got me thinking that we could do a little scratch building today. So what are we gonna need? Well, contents of this box to start. Now a quick trip to the hardware store will give you just about everything you need for something like this. Conduits for wiring, all kinds of little bits and pieces. The electrical aisle is full of all kinds of different single gang and double gang boxes and a few more conduit pieces. The large box is about the only thing in this pile of substantial expense. It's $16 for this box. I happened to find this one on sale. I don't really know why. It had the lid and everything else, but it was on sale for $9. That $9 saves me a lot of time in building it. The little pieces that you see here, they attach to the back and that allows you to mount it to the wall. One thing we always try to do is not use recognizable bolts and screws. So I actually purchased one of these sets here of all the different various types of hex head type, M6, M5, and so on. And then I can use these set screws in place of a regular bolt, this M5. It's probably gonna work. Another great tool to have in your arsenal is these hex head bits. And they attach 
right into your drill and that makes things a whole heck of a lot easier to work with. I'm gonna drill that out just a bit. And there we go. Done. We got a paint job. Just went with a simple gray, hit it with a little bit of clear sealant, and now we need to uh, greebly this bad boy up. The most logical would be our uh, hard drive motor. This came with the stuff I bought for the hard drive. So I found that I have ways of organizing some of the smaller bits and things. Some of the smaller bits of greeblies and little detail pieces that I've collected. A lot of times it's purchased all this kind of stuff on on eBay or just taking things apart and there's just all kinds of little bits and, and things that I saved over the years. Where did you go? I'm looking for some parts and pieces that'll just really, really do it. I mean, that's, that's kind of interesting, right? A couple of my favorite bins, obviously. The hard drive motors. And I've got a couple of bins full of those. <laughs> I actually found all kinds of really strange bits. There's some cool aluminum pieces. But I like this right here. I found this guy too. I want to say it's from a camera. It might even be the hard drive. I don't know. Half the time I don't remember what these are. This would kind of look good if it was nestled up right next to that. And then I think our piece that we just found, that would be more interesting there. You're gonna think, well, that's really small stuff. But I can tell you, if you populate with little tiny bits here and there, all it takes is a little bit, and then it starts to really sell. This is our lid. But what I've been thinking is that our cool little menu display sits right up here on top. But then we need to detail this area here. And I've got a couple other strange bits. No idea exactly what they are. But we're gonna put these in an interesting configuration. And then we're gonna build out the details on this. I think all the little detail greebly bits can be somewhat intimidating and stressful for others. And I think that has to do with not overdoing it. it sounds hilarious to say out loud because you're just this chubby geek in your garage gluing stuff together. But I do think that there's an art form to it. And it's one of the th reasons why I like doing this type of work so much is because similar to someone that maybe paints or sculpts, it all is artwork. And depending on who you talk to, they may think it is or it isn't. Anyway, a little bit of a deep thought. Here's a couple other strange bits. Just a little piece of aluminum bracket. Funny enough, this aluminum bracket piece is left over from the very first DL44 blaster I made on the show, which was like our second episode. And I've saved it ever since, that's three years ago. And they sort of work together. Let's start with that and see where that leads us. I wanted to point out really quickly that a lot of times when I build, I use a couple of different methods. As often as I can, I like to mechanically connect something, bolt it, nail it, screw it to something.
but I use a lot of Bob Smith's CA glue. And I've been asked a lot of times, especially when I'm building something for the room, how I'm thinking of that process without worrying about someone getting a hold of it. I have nephews and nieces and they're young and they want to grab a hold of things. So when I do that for the room build or any project really, I think about where it's going to be located. Will it be accessible? Can you touch it? This is going to be behind the bar and it's going to be elevated into a position where it can't be reached. So these little bits and pieces, they really can't be manipulated to the point where they would break. So I just wanted to point that out because I use a lot of different methods on a lot of these projects. And I thought it was worth pointing out to you how and when I make those decisions so that maybe when you're building your project, you can evaluate what it is you're building, who could possibly touch it, what could break and fall apart that you'd have to fix. And depending on what that is, it might make an adjustment on how you attach things for what it's worth. So for this project, I wanted to use these. I'm gonna pull this apart real quick so you can see. These were created by Blue Realm Studios. And if you see the inside, you can see the ribbing. It's extremely screen accurate from what was in the film. Philip Wise, who just recently retired this past summer from the rebelscum.com, is an icon in room building and collecting legend for all of us. That's where I got these. I've had them in my possession now for over 10 years, and I've been waiting for a project that would be kind of front and center in the room, somewhere that they would show really well, because I only have two of them left. There's two of them on my bench and one of them on one of the panels in the wall and then this one. And you just can't get them anymore. Now you could 3D print your own or whatnot, but for me, these were just really special because I was able to purchase these before they stopped doing the run there. If you know who Philip Wise is, you know he's been a legend in our community. I'm gonna put a link to some of the photos I found recently of one of his original room builds with his collection. And it is just unbelievable. And it's what inspired me to even and start the smugglers room. These LEDs we're using already have a resistor and you might be able to see it right here. It's built in, meaning that the LED is rated from nine to 12 volts. And typically you need a resistor in line in order for the LED to not short out when you power it. And in this case, I'm only simply wire nutting the two lights together. I'm not doing any soldering or anything like that. And then we'll wire this to a power supply. I want to point out, I like using these because it does simplify the electronics portion. It's not going to be complicated. All I got to do is wire nut these together and we're good to go. So the one thing about this project is obvious this seven inch screen. Mounted on the back is the board. HDMI is an input, it has power. These are the manual buttons for it. In order to power that with some kind of video content, I'm gonna use this Mika, Mika, basically just a video player. Slot here for an SD card. There's IR on the front for the remote and an HDMI out on the back. It's pretty straightforward. I used it in the Falcon booth downstairs that we did. It's gonna get mounted in here, and I've drilled a hole at the bottom down here so that I can come up to it and shoot it with the remote and get the IR on it. We're just gonna put it in here in a way that I can pull the, in, the SD card in and out.
really enjoyed this project, and it was awesome to get back to doing something for the room build. Now before we show you this installed and the final result, I want to give a huge thank you to our Smugglers Guild members over on Patreon. I've said it before and I'm going to keep on saying it. Your support is what allows us to keep putting together content and keep building and putting all of this up for everyone to view on YouTube. We couldn't do it without you. So if you're interested in supporting the Smugglers Room, you want to get your hands on some free files, or you want to participate in some of our challenges, then follow the link below and join our Patreon group. All right, let's take a look at how this finished up. I think this little bit of greebly magic adds another layer to the room, but more than that, I hope it gives you an idea or two. There are so many ways you can approach a geeked out build like this, and I hope you found some value in our project today. Because you know, it's just another way of building something out of nothing.